Now, you don't let anyone to access your client ID and client secret. So instead of storing both these values inside this JS file, let me create the .env file inside my project. So I can store both these values inside it. So I'm going to create here a new file inside my project and name this file .env.local. And inside this file, I'm going to create both these variables. So let me copy this first variable and then specify that right here. And I'm going to just capitalize this client ID variable. So I'm going to say here client ID. And this is the Google ID. So I'm going to say here Google client ID. Or you can just say here Google ID. Just out of that, you don't have to specify here double code because in .env, everything is in the string. Just out of that, I'm going to say here Google secret is equal to and then I'm going to copy this secret and then specify that right here. Let me save this file, post this .env.local and get rid of both these variables. And just out of that, right down here, you have to specify the Google provider. Because as you know, inside this app, we are using Google and GitHub provider. So at the top here, I'm going to say import Google provider from in the double code, you specify next auth forward slash providers forward slash and then specify here Google. So you get your Google provider from this Google package. Just out of that, right inside this next auth, here you specify all your providers inside this provider property. So you have to say here providers, specify colon and inside an array, you specify different providers. So as you know, we have here Google provider. So let me copy this, create here a command and say Google provider. And then I'm going to call this Google provider here. And inside this parenthesis, you specify your client ID and client secret as an object. So we pass here curly braces. And here I'm going to say client ID. I'm going to have this client ID inside the dot env dot local file. So I'm going to say here process dot env dot. I'm going to copy this Google ID and then specify that right here. Then pass comma and then specify the client secret. So to specify client secret, you create here a client secret property and then specify process dot env dot and then specify this Google secret here, this variable. That's it. Your authentication is successfully ready from the server. Next, what you have to do is on the client side, you have to call the session provider inside your app component and specify the session provider as a wrapper to your component. So inside of the app.js right here, you have to wrap this app component inside the session provider. So you can share the same session between all the pages. So at the top, here I'm going to say import in the object, you specify session provider. From in the single code, you specify next auth forward slash react. From the react library, you get the next auth session provider component. And just after that, you have to grab this component and inside a parenthesis, you specify first session provider, something like this and wrap your component inside this session provider like this. And in the documentation, you can notice we have to specify the session property to this session provider. You get the session property from the page props. So instead of destructuring the session, I'm just going to say here session to this session provider. Inside this curly braces, I'm going to say page props dot session, something like this. That's it. On the client page, you have to call use session, sign in and sign out button. And then using this data session variable, you can access your sign in user. So let me first copy this and back to my login page. And here I'm going to paste that statement. And you can see inside my section, when I scroll down, here I'm going to have my Google sign in button. So on this Google sign in button, I'm going to create the handler function. So when we click on it, I'm going to call this function sign in of this next auth. The sign in function is going to make a request to this next auth and redirect you to the Google authentication page. So what you have to do is write down here to this button, you specify on click event on click. And here you specify the handler function, which is handle Google sign in. Now let me create this handler function at the top. So scroll up and right here you specify the handler function. So I'm going to say here Google handler function. So I'm going to create here a sync function, handle Google sign in. And when you click on it, I'm going to call this sign in function. 
and this function is going to redirect us to the Google authentication page. So here inside the single code, you specify Google. And then as a second argument, right here, you specify an object and specify the callback URL where you want to redirect the user. So you specify the callback URL and inside this double code, I'm going to specify the localhost 3000 page. So I'm going to redirect my authorized user on my home page. So I'm going to specify that path here as a callback URL. Let me save this file back to the index.js and here I want to access my session variable. So if you back to the documentation, then you can notice using this use session, you can access your session variable and using the session variable, you can access your user and email. So inside this login.js, I'm going to copy this statement, get rid of this use session right from here because I'm not using it inside this login.js. I'm going to back to the index.js. I'm going to paste that use session. And right here, instead of this constant session, I'm going to say constant. In the object, we specify data session is equal to use session, something like this. So this use session is going to return data and I'm going to get that inside this variable. So now once we have the session, I'm going to return the authorized user, otherwise return the guest user. Now to access the username and email to this user, I can specify this session variable. And using this session variable, I can display the username and email. So to this user, I'm going to specify an object and specify here session variable. Now when I call this user, I'm going to pass this session right here as an object, something like this. So now I can access this user inside this user component. And instead of this unknown, right now I'm going to say here session dot user dot name. This is going to print the username. And instead of this h5 here, I'm going to specify session dot user dot email. So using this user object, you can get your username and email of the authorized user. Scroll up, save all the changes, save this file as well, back to the project and reload it. You can see now I'm going to get guest as a response. This is because now I'm not the authorized user. Now, if I open my login page, so if I click on this sign in button, this will redirect me to the login page. And now when I click on this sign in with Google, this is going to redirect me to the Google authentication page. And now by clicking on my email, you can see I'm going to redirect to the home page. This is the Google account name and the email. So now you can see you successfully created Google authentication in your application. Now next, I want to protect this route and click on this sign out button. 